I'm Deborah Haynes and uh, I'm a member of Alexandria Friends Meeting in Virginia right now, but uh, I've been a lot of different places and my association with William Penn House goes back a lot of years. Uh, I think the first time I was here was in the fall of 1967. Uh, I was a student at Oberlin in my junior year at Oberlin and I, I came with a busload of other students for the uh, anti-war demonstration on October 21st, 1967. Um, it was a big deal, the mobilization to end the war was having this uh, protest which was supposed to surround the Pentagon. We were going to levitate the Pentagon. Uh, this was led by Abby Hoffman and Jerry Rubin and I thought it was all very silly but I kind of liked the idea of having enough people to make a circle all the way around the Pentagon. I had a hundred thousand people that, that came to this this thing and I was part of a, a little group we called ourselves the Peace Squad and we were there primarily to try to prevent violence. We were afraid that, that these demonstrations would turn violent and it would really set back the cause of peace. There were five or six of us and we, we uh, worked our way up through the crowd on the, the, the river side of the Pentagon. Somewhere on the other side, Abby Hoffman was doing his incantations and spells and trying to levitate the Pentagon. I never saw any of that. I, <laughs> I never saw any of the action on, on this day. There was just this huge crowd of people around the Pentagon. We walked up the steps and there on the plaza was a line of soldiers with rifles, shoulder to shoulder. But we were kind of looking around for what we could do when some people at the way back of the crowd started throwing bottles at the soldiers and we thought this is, <laughs> this is a bad situation, this could escalate into something, something bad. And we sort of spread out through the crowd, the five or six of us, and we started to chant, please sit down, please sit down, and it worked. People began sitting down. And once this whole crowd of people on this side of the Pentagon was sitting, the people trying to pull, throw bottles were very much exposed because you can't throw a bottle sitting down, you have to stand up, and, and they simply stopped. They, they left, they were too visible. But the effect was, here we were sitting, up against this line of, of soldiers with their rifles and it started to get dark and the soldiers I, I guess decided to start moving us out but instead of doing anything aggressive or provocative they just began inching forward they began sort of sticking their feet between people and under people so the, the line of soldiers was just moving forward very slowly. It was really a very clever tactic because it didn't provoke any sort of response and there really wasn't anything we could do to respond. We were, we were sitting there, we were sort of a, a captive audience and they were able to arrest us one by one instead of trying to arrest a big mob of people, which I'm sure was, was much easier. So um, I, I, did get, I did get arrested. I found, found these feet just sort of working their way by me. And as soon as I was on the other side of the line, I was grabbed and thrown into a paddy wagon, in the course of which I lost my shoes. Uh, never did <laughs> see my shoes again. Um, they, the paper said there were about 600 people arrested at this demonstration. And they made a big deal about the kind of the, the violence and people trying to break through the line and getting thrown down the stairs and none of that happened, at least not on my side of the Pentagon. There was, there was no disorder, there was no violence. It was very quiet, it was very peaceful, it was really a, a very nice place to, to be. But there were 600 of us, they didn't know what to do with us, they took us to Occoquan. And we spent the night there. And on Sunday, probably Sunday afternoon, they told us that anybody who was willing to plead nolo contendere would get a six day suspended sentence and could go, go home. And this sounded to me like a pretty good deal. So I did plead no contest to the charge of crossing a police line, although it was in fact the police line that had crossed me, not the other way around, and uh, was released. But released meant 
being put on a bus, it must have been 11 o'clock at night by this time, and being dumped at Union Station in the middle of D.C. And here I was with no shoes and no money in D.C., which I didn't know. And I thought, there's William Penn House. I know about William Penn House. It's up there on Capitol Hill somewhere. So I looked it up in a phone book, as, as I remember, and got the address, and I walked up the hill, and I rang the doorbell, and Sally Corey came and let me in and found me a bed. <laughs> and in the morning, she found me a pair of shoes and lent me, lent me the money for an airplane ticket and took me to the airport, and got me back to Oberlin. Being taken care of that way was so important to me. It was just such, a, such an amazing experience because I was scared and I was very much alone and I was so grateful. That made William Penn House a very special place, place for me, just that, that first experience. Uh, one of my friends did not take the NOLO contendery deal and ended up in, in prison for several months and was very badly treated and he came he came here to recuperate when they they let him loose and I I, I got together with him here to to talk about everything that had happened this was sort of our it became our base of support for for those Vietnam War years May Day was another of those great big hundred thousand people come to Washington what the organizers wanted to do was shut down the city get people to sit in the streets, block traffic, just make trouble. The group of us that gathered at William Penn House weren't really into that tactic. We, we didn't quite see the point of inconveniencing a lot of people. It seemed like it would just make everybody mad. And we spent the night before on sleeping bags on the floor in the conference room and uh, got up before dawn and set out to walk down the hill with candles. And our, our stated intention was to walk to the Pentagon and hold a candlelight vigil and prayer for, prayer for peace. Well, we got as far as the agriculture building on Independence Avenue. <laughs> and there were police and there was tear gas and there were people being run down by motorcycle cops. And it was, it was, a, it was a mess. It was clear that we were not going to get across the 14th Street Bridge. So we, we sat um, in that, that wide place on the sidewalk in front of the agriculture building. And uh, police came and scooped us all up, told us we were blocking the sidewalk, which we were not, um, paddy wagon that took us to the, the training field at uh, JFK Stadium, hundreds of us. And then they moved us to the DC Armory. And uh, they didn't know what to do with us. There were, were hundreds of demonstrators. We had been arrested without anybody recording who we were or what we had done. So they really had no, no record of why they, they were holding us. The armory, big open space, very hard floor. We had no bedding, we had no food. We, there was a little bit of water, but not very much. The toilets were overflowing almost instantly. It was, it was really, it was awful. And a, a, a black Baptist church nearby brought in clothes of bologna sandwiches. And I was so grateful to them because that's all we, that's all we had to eat for a couple of days. And after, I think it was the second day, they told us that if we, if we gave our names, they would charge us with something very minor and then we could go. And eventually they just let us all go. Some people did give their names and, and get out a little early, but they, they just didn't know what to do with us, so they just turned us loose. And a group of us, I, I remember vividly walking up the hill to William Penn House. It had rained the night before and the air smelled so good. And it was just so wonderful to be free and the trees were blooming and it was just, it was a wonderful, wonderful world. And William Penn House was where we left our sleeping bags and our, our backpacks, but it was also our home base, you know, it was where, it's the haven. The next time I spent any time at William Penn House was in the, the summer of 1974. My, 
I'd gone to graduate school in Chicago, met my husband, we got married in 73, and we're doing, we were doing dissertation research in D.C. that summer. We stayed for a couple of weeks as guests at William Penn House, and Bob and Sally said to us, you know, we haven't had a vacation ever since we, we bought this place. Could you house it for William Penn House for a couple of weeks? And, and we did. It was a very quiet time. There wasn't anything happening. There weren't a lot of guests. David and I were staying here anyhow, so we just we were just house sitters for the last two weeks of August in 1974. Oh, Sally Corey was like a bird, just full of energy and life and vitality and um, love. And, and Bob was just quiet and steady and there, and um, they were wonderful, wonderful people. They, they, had, uh, they had this dream of, of creating space, and they opened up the space, and it was just what was needed. This place was a, it was an anchor. It was a, a place of peace.